I was finishing Motherland at that time, I remember, and I thought I was going to transition to fiction. I was so ready to do that. And here comes another film. I'm like, oh my God, another documentary. But how can you not, <laughs> right? So, um, so then I was at the ground, I think, at the end of 2017 doing some research. It was a very sort of vague notion of Duterte and the drug war, et cetera. And then I talked to a lot of people in the ground, the opposition, the inner circle of Duterte. And then, of course, I thought, you know, I should really talk to the press. And Maria Ressa, I think, was the loudest voice against Duterte at the time. So I thought, okay, she should be, you know, I should actually talk to her. So um, uh, the, we met. And then I knew that she was going to be a big part of the story because she would, you know, we've seen the film. She's very compelling and very articulate about what is happening in the country. And uh, so in the beginning, she was part of an ensemble cast. And then um, she just became such a big part of the story because, you know, documentaries work. They just, it's a very Zen-like type of filmmaking, right? The story, especially if you are filming unfolding stories. So basically we started the principal photography in February of 2019, last year. I got to the Philippines um, February 12th, and then she was arrested in February 13th. Wow. So you know it's like, okay, here we go, fasten your seat belts, and that's, that's what happened. Just because of who I am, right? It is a particular gaze. And uh, which is informed by uh, being an immigrant and um, living here and also living in this liminal space between the Philippines and the US. Um, I, I think based on that, it has to be inherent, right? The, the gaze and the voice. But um, this film particularly, I think it's both epic but also very personal to me, which I didn't think it would be until I started getting to know Maria, because Maria is, for all intents and purposes, Asian American. She grew up in Tom's River, New Jersey. I did not know that begin at the beginning. Um, I knew she she grew up in the States, but it just dawned on me um, that we're, I relate to her very much at that level, right? So there is a part in the film, I, that's why I thought it was really important in the film to um, talk about her backstory. Because she does talk about, if you remember, she talks about landing in, uh, in Tom's River, being a brown kid, not speaking the language, and trying to run away from everything brown, because it was, when was that, the 80s? 73. 1973. Maria's sister is here, Michelle. Oh. Um, so that was 1973, and so that's what you did then, right? And, the, and talking about how you had to work 100% or 110% in order to feel like you deserved being there. So I totally related to that. I, I knew what that felt like. And I knew a lot of like Asian Americans would uh, relate to that. So like that line has to stay in there. And like we didn't have, at some point we didn't have time for a backstory. I'm like, no, that backstory is staying in there because I needed to, you know, I needed that voice to be in there. So it always, it always emerges, even if I'm conscious or not, right? Just because of who I am. I, I love how much of a sense you get for Maria and she, how, like, she's such a Star Wars nerd. Like, yes. <laughs> she's a sci-fi nerd. It's like, yeah. so, it's, yeah. I love how much you get to know her yeah. in the film. Both your documentaries, you know, like, there's this kind of transnational question. Like, why is, why is that something that's still, like, so, uh, why is that such a theme in, in thinking about Asian American representation right now? the transnationality. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I mean, I can only talk about the thousand cuts, yes, right? Yeah. Um, I didn't mean it to be, nor did I think of it, mm -hmm. right? Because really my interest was President Duterte and the drug war. But I just ended up with this character who was Maria Ressa, right? And therefore, we, we really dealt with those issues as, as an aside, mm -hmm. almost. Because we, I, I wanted it to, I wanted really the, the story to be the erosion of democracy and disinformation and the drug war and the end of the world. And then, but there's also this kind of representation in the film that just happened to me because it's a character yeah. I ended up with, which was for me lucky. But I always look for the, I, I mean, I end up with those characters anyway. <laughs>
all the time, right? So there's something interesting. There's a moment in the film where they talk about Rattler and like where it's funded, and and you know that there's some like quote unquote trolls who are just like, oh, it's it's like American funded. This yeah. isn't like, which is bad, right? Yeah, it's right. necessarily bad if it's well. There is a rule, right? That um, uh, media companies can be foreign owned. Mm. So yeah, so being um, e either American owned, that's a bad thing. But well, e anything that's foreign owned in terms of media, right? Yeah. Do you think, like, I wonder, like, even just like Maria's accent, like, does that, like, for a certain audience in the Philippines, like, make her, like, less trustworthy? That's a very good question. Um, you know, when I hear her speak Tagalog, it throws me, because she really speaks Tagalog well, although she doesn't think she does. She speaks Tagalog better than I do, really. When I hear her, I'm like, oh, you, you speak. But her go-to is English. And I think, yes, that, that is, like, Rappler is also English, right? So it speaks to a certain class of people in the country uh, who, uh, but then mo most everything in the Philippines is conducted in English, business, politics, everything. But um, Yes, I mean her accent does. It, it, it you know, it's it's middle class and sort of elite. It's seen as elite because of her, of her accent. But the day to day of Rappler, the people are up front. Uh, you know, in the front lines are the young reporters, really. So Maria is really not day to day out there. But she is now the face because she's the one targeted by the president. She's so strong, and, and I see all the younger reporters who are just like on the verge of tears the entire movie, and I feel so bad for them. Um. Yeah, yeah she, she doesn't cry. She does cry sometimes, but I think it's important for her to stay strong, and all the other reporters are the ones who, because they're, they're in a tough yeah. position, and they're really young, when you think about they're in their 20s and early 30s. So I'm not really into like messages. I don't think I'm not prescriptive that way. I think I'm, my films um, are more explorations and questions and maybe give you <coughs> an experience of other people's lives. I think um, messages are also very informed by your personal history, where you are in your life. So uh, I never, that's never in my head when I make a film. Um, if you go away thinking more about the issues, that, that you have more questions is more appropriate than answers, right? And um, the, there are things like, when I cut with my editor, sometimes we don't really deal with like exposition, right? So we have this thing like, can they Google that? If they can Google that, let them Google it after, <laughs> if they're really interested, right? Because a film is a film to give you an experience, to immerse you in this experience. So. Um, I think it's, um, but right now I think you, you, you'll go away, yeah, thinking there are a lot of um, similarities between what's happening here in the Philippines and really worldwide, right? This rise of authoritarianism, this rise of fear, and, um, and where do they go to, where do they turn to the strong men? All men, right? And, um, and that's worldwide, that's global. So it, it is a global story, and also the story of disinformation. It's very, that's a very strong theme in the, in the film. I've, I've never felt that filming, you know? I, I think because my style is I just stick around. Like she said, like she's, yeah, you know what I mean? Um, you just stay until they're like, they just give in, you know? But that's, I think what filmmakers do, documentary filmmakers do. Until they're like, oh my god, you're still here? Because that's what I do. Um, so I, I never, f I, uh, especially in the Philippines, I think, uh, you know, I never feel that my being female um, cuts off access. Or I, I um, maybe I just say, yeah, I'm, maybe it's, you know, uh, I'm in denial. But I, I, just, I just, I, I, yeah, that's my style. I just stick around until they can't say no, or it's a negotiated yes. Right? Because what I'm really wanting is a lot, right? And of course they will say no. Like I always say, I'll never say yes to me. What a crazy request to follow someone with a camera, right? Um, so I, yeah, until I break them down, I'm still there. So um, this was a breaking story, obviously, so we had to fight a lot of the networks, CNN, Al Jazeera, they were always there. But they always just helicoptered in. Right, so when the dust cleared, we were still there, right? So, um, yeah, that's just what I do.